Hi, I'm Rachel Mueller, Northwest Trek's Conservation Program Coordinator. I bet you're beginning to feel a little cooped up, so how about spending a moment in nature with me? Spring is finally here, and that means longer days and warmer days. But that also means increased amphibian activity at the ponds here at Northwest Trek. Now we survey these ponds for egg masses every year. We share our findings with the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife so they can learn more about amphibian populations and work to best protect the frogs, toads, newts, and salamanders of Washington State. As you listen carefully, as we have a look for egg masses, you might even hear a Pacific chorus frog, also known as a Pacific tree frog, chorusing in the background. Now this is a male and this is his breeding call. He is calling to attract a female to this pond in, in hopes that she will breed and lay eggs with him. Now, this pond is currently filled with egg masses and you can maybe even find some egg masses close to home as well. Now we're gonna move really slowly and really quietly and have a look at some of the egg masses that are in this pond. I'm gonna put on some polarized sunglasses to help me view them and let's have a look. Now right here, I can already see an egg mass. Several actually, but let's look at this one here. I'm going to put my hand underneath it just to make it a little bit more visible for the camera. Now these are the tiny eggs of the Pacific tree frog. You can see the developing embryos inside. They look uh, lighter in color and will continue to get lighter in color as they develop. You can see more right over here. And if you're listening closely and you can hear that call in the background, this is the same frog that's calling to attract a female. Now in looking closely, I actually see another egg mass, but can you see how different this egg mass looks from the others? If you look really close, you might even already begin to see frilly gills developing on the larva inside this egg. Now this is a single egg of the long-toed salamander. I frequently find them as single eggs like this, but I also find them in small egg packets pretty regularly as well. But you can see some pretty big differences just in the size of the developing larva inside, as well as the size of the jelly layer that surrounds that larva. Looking closely again at the tree frog, they're much closer packed, much closer together and smaller. Now, if we look closely toward the deeper water, we might see some other species of amphibian eggs. I'm looking for round globs that look a little bit different than the straight lines of the sticks and the vegetation that I can see in the pond. And as I look out toward a little bit deeper water, I can see a round glob that's catching my eye. Let's very slowly and very carefully move toward it. We do not want to disturb the, the pond bottom, and of course we do not want to harm any eggs, so we're going to move very slowly, very carefully. Now if you look closely at this egg mass below, this looks a lot different than the eggs that we were just looking at. Now let me point out that we actually have two different egg masses side by side here, and we already learned about the Pacific tree frog here, but let's look at some of the differences here. Now this is a much larger egg mass, as you can see, about the size maybe even of a grapefruit. Shaped a lot even like grapes as well. Now this is the egg mass of the northern red-legged frog, and you can see the tadpoles are actually emerging from the egg mass now. This summer, you can look for these tadpoles to metamorphose or change into froglets and emerge from the breeding pond. As we continued our surveys through the ponds of Northwest Trek, I am really excited to share with you another egg mass of a different species. Let's have a look straight down. Now I'm going to bring this egg mass closer to the surface to give you a better look. I am very careful not to dislodge it from its anchor point. Now this is the egg mass of the Northwestern salamander and you can see some pretty big differences from the other egg masses that we were looking at. First, this one is a lot firmer. It holds its shape much better than some of the other egg masses that were much more runny. Now this egg mass, even after the larvae emerge, may stick around for several months. Thank you for following Northwest Trek Wildlife Park and our continuing amphibian monitoring field work. Be sure to check back. We'll keep you updated as new amphibians arrive to breed throughout the season.